right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, the competitor list for this weekend Chicago Pro was just released. And I think similar to the Vancouver competitor list, people are a little bit underwhelmed with just the sheer number of competitors being so low at this show being only eight competitors and Vancouver only having six. So in this lineup, you've got Blessing Awodabu, Stephen Daniels, Iron Golly, Matt Kuba, Emmanuel Longoria, Patrick Moore, Eric Ramirez, Justin Shire making his pro debut here. So honestly, my concern with these competitor lists or these competitions really seeming to not have that many guys showing up is not just from the lack of uh, lack of competitiveness, but from the standpoint of sustainability of these shows. You got to keep in mind every show now has a live stream. Every show has to pay for the production of that live stream. And they got to get people to watch. So if, they, if these competitor lists don't really have guys turning up, nobody's going to buy the live stream. And it's not going to be a sustainable model to keep doing all these different shows. So I guess the real question is, are there too many shows? Is it unsustainable how it is right now? Or is there a reasonable number of shows, but the incentive to compete isn't enough as far as prize money? Because obviously every show offers the possibility of an Olympia qualification. That's the big appeal. The prize money at most shows is only $10,000, and that's been, I think, the minimum prize money for like 30-plus years. It hasn't really changed. Then on top of that, these promoters have the overhead of whatever space they rent, the production team, and they've got to pay the IFBB for the, uh, the privileges of doing the show under the IFBB banner. Sanctioning, a sanction fee. And honestly, eight competitors isn't that bad, but like a show like Vancouver, where you've got six competitors and the top five all gets paid, you basically got to pay everybody that shows up except for one guy. And of course, there's all these other divisions too, men's physique, classic physique, all the women's divisions. And those are additional draws for ticket sales and pay-per-view buys, of course. But I think bodybuilding is still kind of the main spectacle that's going to draw in viewers on a live show. So it's interesting to me, but specifically with the Chicago Pro, um, obviously I think we're looking at Blessing here. We're looking at Justin Shire. This is his pro debut. And I think we're looking at Patrick Moore as well. I mean, the Arnold Classic didn't go the way he wanted it to go. He was last place at the Arnold Classic. Probably not the comeback he envisioned. With Blessing, the Olympia clearly didn't go the way that he was hoping it would go. Tied for last at the Olympia. So in regards to Blessing and Patrick, I think we're talking about two guys looking for redemption at this show, hoping for a win, hoping for a chance to get back to the Olympia and make a statement. And then with Justin, it's not a story of redemption, but we, we got a story of possibility and potential with Justin. And I think another main takeaway here was that Carlos Thomas Jr. is not on this lineup. So I think that means he's going to be doing a different show unless he just hasn't uh, submitted his application yet. But I'd say really, you know, Blessing and Patrick, while they're not A-list bodybuilders, they're probably the two most accomplished bodybuilders in this lineup. And they're pretty, they're pretty comparable right now with Blessing's last Olympia appearance, Patrick's last Arnold Classic appearance. On paper, Patrick has a much higher Olympia placing than Blessing, being 10th back in 2019. But I honestly feel like looking at this lineup, I'm thinking about Justin here. Justin's probably looking at this lineup thinking he's got a really good shot at making a pretty big impact on his pro debut. I'll show you guys this video that Justin posted just a couple days ago of him posing where I thought he looked really impressive. Like I said, I think he's got a really, really impressive upper body. I do feel like his lower body probably needs to catch up a little bit to be more competitive. Um, but his upper body really is like top tier bodybuilding potential. But the reason that I point that out is because while that has been kind of the criticism of Justin is this what if with, with the lower body is the two best bodybuilders in that line in this lineup right now have had that same exact what if with blessings legs and with Patrick's legs. Those have been a big criticism of both of those guys. So I'm looking at this lineup and I'm looking at the updates that we've seen from Justin recently. And we haven't really seen as much uh, from Patrick lately or from, uh, from blessing. We haven't seen a real physique update from blessing since early May. And we saw a partial physique update from Patrick uh, early June. So we don't have a whole lot to go on here to compare Justin's updates to. But I think overall this could be this could turn out to be a really solid debut for Justin Shire and I think he might have a shot at winning this thing. But I mean looking at this lineup he's got a real shot at top 3 but that's not saying too much when you've got a lineup of only 8 guys with two really standout accomplished bodybuilders. All right, now next up in the news, this isn't a bodybuilding story, but it's the rare strongman story that we don't talk about as much on this channel, but I thought this was a really, really interesting topic. So Brian Shaw, 
one of the most popular and recognizable strongmen and world's strongest man winners of all time. As you guys know, he has his own competition, the Shaw Classic. So he announced today on his YouTube and his Instagram that at the Shaw Classic, he's going to be, he, he purchased or got the rights to somehow the trademark of the title, the strongest man on earth. So he's not going to be changing the name of the Shaw Classic to the strongest man on earth competition. But the winner of the Shaw Classic will be crowned the strongest man on earth, a title that he acquired from Paul Ohl. So I think it goes without saying that the reason why this is such a big story is because that's pretty direct competition with the, the biggest competition in Strongman, the most recognizable name in Strongman, the world's strongest man competition. So I'm curious to see how well this goes over because obviously it's not the same names. So I don't think there would be any like legal dispute between world's strongest man and Brian Shaw. But I think in recent years, probably the past five years or so, there's been a lot of complaints from the athletes specifically, the athletes and the fans actually, towards the world's strongest man as an organization, as a competition. And Brian Shaw approaches his competition, the Shaw Classic, from, from, the, from the mindset of a competitor, what kind of competition would a competitor want to compete in? And I feel like the strongman competitors really love and support Brian Shaw and the Shaw Classic. And I think while it may seem like a long shot right now, the other question is, is there a possibility that the Shaw Classic having this title of the strongest man on earth could one day surpass the world's strongest man in at least popularity, probably not in overall reputation because the world's strongest man has been around so long. I feel like that would be a conversation for way further down the road, but this title itself does have a long reputation, the, the strongest man on earth. It existed prior to the Shaw Classic, so in terms of prestige, could this be something that one day rivals the title of world's strongest man? And I think inevitably there's also going to be the issue of if someone wins the world's strongest man whatever given year, and then someone different wins Brian Shaw's The Strongest Man on Earth, then who really is the world's strongest man, or whatever term you want to call it, the strongest man on this planet for that year if you have two different winners of essentially the same title with different semantics. And I think the other issue that I could see being a likely outcome of this is if the world's strongest man starts to take kind of a defensive position on this and has the athletes that compete in the world's strongest man sign some kind of exclusivity contract saying they will not be competing in Brian's Shaw Classic or at least competing for that title of the strongest man on earth that you can, they can only pick one or the other, I think would probably be the most likely outcome of what happens here. Because I don't really think there's much of a legal route, especially if it looks like Brian's going to continue to call the competition itself the Shaw Classic, and he's not changing the name of the competition to the strongest man on earth. And, and Brian is a very peaceful, soft-spoken guy. People call him a gentle giant, but I do feel like this was a bit of a shot at the world's strongest man. I mean, this is a direct competition to the title that world's strongest man is and gives out. I think you can make no mistake about it. This seems like it was very intentional in that aspect. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below about Brian Shaw's strongest man on earth title. And what kind of competition, if any, it will be to the actual World's Strongest Man competition? And do you think the World's Strongest Man is going to have an issue with this legally or potentially play some kind of restriction that doesn't allow competitors to compete in Brian's version of the title? I was reading the comments on Brian's announcement. It seems like a lot of the competitors are very excited about this and supportive and eager to compete. And it seems like the fans were very excited about this. And at the same time, I think a lot of comments on Brian's post were very critical towards the way the world's strongest man has been run over the past couple of years. And which title do you think will end up being the most prestigious? If you win the world's strongest man, or if you win the strongest man on earth in any given year. And apparently, that, that title will start being awarded this year in 2023 at the Shaw Classic. Which, by the way, Mitchell Hooper, your current world's strongest man, will be, he, right now, he's on the competitor list for that Shaw Classic. He will be competing for the title of the strongest man on earth in addition to his world's strongest man title. And I, I think there's also the topic of conversation with the prize money. I mean, the prize money at world's strongest man has long been speculated to be far too little for what the title represents. Up until this past year, 2023, 
Well, it's about fifty grand. I know the Arnold Strongman Classic is the highest paying strongman competition with, uh, I believe, $80,000 was 2023 for first. Um, but Brian Shaw pays a pretty fair amount of prize money to his competitors with last year's Shaw Classic winner receiving $38,500 just for first place. Second place was twenty five grand. Third place was twenty three fifty, dollars um, And in fourth place last year, 16000 But he paid every single competitor of all 15 that showed up for a total prize money of $154,500, which in Strongman is a lot of prize money. So it's not like Brian's competition is like some small mom-and-pop thing in comparison to other Strongman competitions like the World's Strongest Man or Arnold Strongman Classic. He's really right in the, in the zone of what those competitions are paying out, a, a very fair prize money, which I'm assuming will continue to go up as the competition grows and probably especially with the addition of this uh, Strongest Man on Earth title. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I think there's a lot to consider about this announcement. And I think this will probably be remembered as a pretty historical moment in Strongman history. Now, next up in the news, a recent physique update from Brett Wilkin at 274 pounds. We haven't seen Brett on stage in a while now as he took some time off to become a father and welcome his child into the world. And I am assuming we're not going to see Brett on stage until the Olympia this year because he's already qualified. There's really no reason for him to compete prior to the Olympia. So I'm assuming that will be the next time that we see him on stage with the improvements that he would have supposedly made in this time that he's taken off. And look, my honest opinion is he looks fantastic here. He looks bigger. He looks fuller. He, he looks great. His upper body in these updates remind me a little bit of like a prime uh, Evan Sentapani. I'm curious to see how he does at the Olympia. I always love a wild card, a guy that we haven't seen in a while, a guy that has a great physique, a great fan base. A lot of people think um, that Brett Wilkin is going to be like the next big thing, and I hope that's true. I, I hope he comes into the Olympia and smashes guys and make, makes a really huge statement because that's, I think, the most exciting outcome is when we've got something that we didn't expect to happen at the Olympia, and you've got a guy that comes in, um, shows up fantastic, and just, just knocks the placing out of the park. Derek Lunsford, for example, I think a lot of people were expecting him to do well at the 2022 Olympia. I don't think very many people were expecting him to be top two. I don't think they were expecting him to be that good. But sure enough, there he was. And the final story that I have for you guys today, bodybuilding-wise, Regan Grimes posting another physique update as he prepares to return to the stage in Italy. He's doing another show shortly after that, but Italy is the most, uh, most pressing show on the menu for him. Trying to earn that Olympia qualification. We haven't seen Regan in a while. I think in a lot of the updates that we've seen from him recently, he looks very impressive. But again, I think the main criticism of Regan has been over-promise and under-deliver. It's been, you know, he looks really good individually on Instagram. And, and really, even on stage, he's got a fantastic structure. It seems like he just gets overlooked or out-muscled. So Regan is a very difficult guy to predict how he's going to do at a show based on any updates that he posts because he historically has looked really good in his pictures. But he also historically hasn't had a placing that is matched up with some of these looks that he's brought on the Instagram picture. So it's hard for me to say. I honestly think he looks fantastic in this picture. What does that mean for how he's going to look at this Italy show? Probably not a whole lot. I don't know. But in any case, I'm still rooting for Regan. I would love to see him do well. I'd love to see him punch his ticket to the Olympia. I still think he's got really good lines. He's got a fantastic structure. It's just a matter of, I think both size and conditioning are, are, are the two things that have historically been hit or miss for him. I'm still rooting for him. But what do you guys think in the comments below? How will Regan do at his next two shows? Will he qualify for the Olympia? Can he win a show to get there? And what do you think the future holds for this young, promising bodybuilder? Let me know in the comments down below. That's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please like, subscribe, click that bell notification icon if you have not already. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power, my Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power, my secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, Give that one a look, and all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.